Almost 2001, new technology and how it's affecting our lives now. Tonight we're talking about virtual reality, computer-generated versions of the real thing, used mostly in the labs or as entertainment. But now it's becoming a valuable tool for people with disabilities. Here's NBC's George Lewis. Yeah, I'll hold you up there. Three-year-old Joel Chapman is about to take a driving lesson. Here comes Joel. A $600,000 pilot program using state-of-the-art technology is teaching physically challenged kids like Joel to operate motorized wheelchairs safely without running into things. This helmet puts Joel into the realm of virtual reality, simulated worlds created by computers projecting 3D images in front of his eyes, giving him the illusion of driving the wheelchair. Good man, good job. As he manipulates the controls on the chair, the virtual landscape in front of him moves straight ahead, back backward or turning, depending on where he wants to go. Dr. Dean Inman of the Oregon Research Institute compares it to pilots training in flight simulators. Here, these chairs cost between ten and thirteen thousand dollars. They can be risky, and uh, insurance companies will not buy them for kids unless we know they can use them. I see your smiley face. As the training advances, kids learn to pilot their chairs across a virtual intersection with cars whizzing by. Seven-year-old Mikey Bays made it look like child's play. And five-year-old Chris Cobb graduated from virtual reality to the real world after just six hours of training. But when I tried it, I discovered it was anything but easy. This is tough, like staying on the sidewalk. It is in a real wheelchair, too. A few seconds later, I was run over by a virtual truck, a powerful safety lesson. So how many lives do I get? <laughs> More than 10 million Americans, adults as well as kids, rely on wheelchairs. Special education instructors say virtual reality can enhance their lives. For those students that are strictly, basically wheelchair bound, it'll just bring the world to them. By 2001, virtual reality is projected to be a four and a half billion dollar industry. 200 million of that helping people with disabilities. A recent conference on virtual reality and disabilities showed off items like this glove, which translates some of the hand signs used by the deaf into audible sounds. For instance, I love you. I love you. Or these sensing devices, which detect muscle movement, enabling people with limited use of their arms and hands to operate machinery or play virtual musical instruments. Darlene Calvert, a counselor who trains other people with disabilities to live independently, was fascinated. For someone with a disability, it's really exciting. These things are, are indeed prosthetics, and we need to clear the way that these things are seen as medically necessary for, for the disabled. Virtual reality helping people with disabilities. By the year 2001, it may be almost as commonplace as today's crutches and wheelchairs. George Lewis, NBC News, Eugene, Oregon.